so when you are trying to correct the process or improve the process process improvement approach is important what is a process it converts the input into desirable form of outputs series of activities is called a process and this series of activities will convert the input under specified conditions into desirable form of output the outputs are nothing but the products and services right the inputs are the materials you know some uh, machineries manpower and the environmental condition are you know, called the process parameters all of them convert now this training is a process am i correct training is a process what is the output here come on what is the output in the training project knowledge added knowledge current before training program you have certain level of knowledge with respect to the lean six sigma after the training program you are you will you will get some more knowledge added so the added knowledge is the output what are the input here what are the input come on the lectures time, the time training lectures, literature training literature material training material Yes. the live training sessions the powerpoint presentation the online platform all of them are no input right and the process trainer uh, yes trainer trainer yeah trainer all of them are no resources input so input are converted into output and you know that is called a process you process has got two kind of parameters output parameter one is effectiveness another one is efficiency what is effectiveness imagine a set of 15 people or 20 people undergo the training program become a black belt become a black belt they get the certificate but they are not able to do a single project do you think the training program is very effective no so your product is a defective product your product has got certain defects that is that means you no know, no effectiveness so ineffectiveness is termed as defect ineffectiveness is termed as defect imagine you are going to a restaurant you are ordering a coffee you are going to a restaurant you are ordering a coffee and coffee is served to you and you are you are you, know, you start you started consuming it and you don't like the coffee that because the taste is not good now tell me what is this issue is it an effectiveness issue or something else coffee is not good so the coffee preparation process can i can i consider the coffee preparation process as ineffective sir no yes sir yes yes because the the characteristics of the coffee is not meeting your requirement maybe maybe it is not hot enough or maybe it is not strong enough or maybe it is not you no know, sweet enough so ineffectiveness is termed as defect you can you can identify defects from any product any process all that required is your you no know, proper understanding and suppose you no know, all of you uh, take up the training program you come out very well you score very well and you are you are also become you know, knowledgeable you are able to implement everything is happening but the training program is you no know, very stressful we are not keeping you comfortable does it mean the training is effective maybe in certain aspect it is effective but what is the customer requirement stressless learning am i right hmm. if we bore you with many statistics or no use unnecessary words all these things no will create stress so creating stress is a form of defect that will you know, pull down your effectiveness so you need to understand defect can exist with respect to the characteristics of the product or a service right and now another aspect is efficiency what is efficiency now the training is designed for 6 days we we need to cover up the modules wider as well as deeper and you no know, within the available time we need to cover up the program without compromising the effectiveness or otherwise let me say it other way other words the training program you know uh, is priced very high let us say the black belt training program you know will cost you 
uh, 1.5 lakhs. What is the problem now? Why it is priced at 1.5 lakhs? Same program, same output, but it is priced at 1.5 lakhs. Why they are charging very high? Any comment? Based on branding. Cost of Based on branding, okay. You Cost of manufacturing is overcharging. Overcharging is yes, good. Yes. No, it's not good. Not good. Why do they charge high? Maybe no. The issue is they can charge low. They can charge low if they are efficient enough, isn't it? If they overutilize the resources, what is required to achieve the effectiveness? You want do only that. Anything you do beyond the you know the required level to achieve the desired effectiveness is simply called as waste. That's nothing but inefficiency. That's nothing but inefficiency. So use only the resources just required to reach the desirable effectiveness. That is called efficiency. You overutilize the resource or underutilize the resource, both will make your process inefficient. Both will make your process inefficient. For example, I can keep the training program in a five-star hotel and then charge you double the money. Will it add value? Same program, no. same trainer. I keep it in a five-star hotel and then you know ask each one of you to pay sixty-five thousand rupees. It is inefficient, isn't it? So this understanding is called lean. This understanding is called lean. If a better way of doing a work exists, you must adopt it. If you still say, you know, what I am doing is great, I will not, you know, uh, improve it, improve the process, or I will not change the process, show a lot of resistance, then you are inefficient. Many people, you know, the the online, you know, still they are not in a position to appreciate, not in a position to appreciate, or not in a position to, you know, uh, accept the online training. Am I correct? There are many people. But do you think the learning is going on still in an effective manner? Your expectations are meeting. Yes or no? It's based on yes, the generation. Yes. So the current gen, you are adapting the process to the current generation, and it is effective. Very so good. Maybe Very the different generation may may feel it's a problem for them. All right. Correct. So always, you know, customer segment have to be understood. Never mix up the customers and then expect a you no know, common answer. It is impossible. Always, you must uh, produce products only to a specific customer segment. The narrower, the better. You can't produce a product, you know, for a person uh, with the age group of zero to hundred. You will never be able to take a decision. Either you make it zero to ten, or zero to five, or even make it two to three. You will, you will end up producing a great product. So process can have two parameters. One is effectiveness. Another one is efficiency. The inefficiency is termed as waste. Lean will attack all the inefficiencies. Six Sigma will up attack all the ineffectiveness. As a result, your journey is towards excellence. The result is world-class product, right? So same example. You are going to the restaurant. You have ordered the coffee. Coffee is served. You don't like the taste of the coffee. Tell me, is it an effectiveness issue or an efficiency issue? Come on. The effectiveness issue. The effectiveness issue. Taste is bad, right? You don't like the coffee. Let me give another scenario. You are going to a restaurant. You are ordering the coffee. You are made to wait for 20 minutes. Still, coffee is not served. Efficiency issue. Yes. Maybe after 20 minutes, 21st minute, you get your coffee. But coffee is really good. But still, as a customer, you are not happy. Now, what is the issue? It's efficiency issue. Efficiency. They could have served the coffee. Within five minutes of ordering, isn't it? Within five minutes of receiving the order, they took twenty minutes. By the time the customer got irritated and left the place, so both are equally important, isn't it? Effectiveness and the efficiency. Sometimes, you no know, uh, inefficient process can pull down your you know, effect effectiveness also. So take care of both. This is what is called you know operational excellence. This effort is called Lean Six Sigma approach. So Six Sigma is basically a metric. that will tell you how good your processes are in terms of the capability to deliver results meeting customer requirement six sigma is not only a metric it is also a methodology it recommends it advocates two methodology one is dmaic another one is dmadb 
I will use the DMAIC to improve the quality of existing products. Or otherwise, I will use the DMAIC to improve my bottom line growth. There is another methodology called the DMAIV. I will use it for developing new products. Otherwise, for improving my top line growth. So there are two methods. One is DMAC, another one is DMAT-V. Why DMAC? For all the existing products, existing process, existing quality problems, I will use DMAIC, DMAC. But when I am developing a new product, when I am expanding the capacity, or when I am you know, redesigning a product, all the time I will use DMADV. That is called you no know, DMAD-V. So Six Sigma is also a methodology. When you use DMAD-V for developing a new product, that is called Design for Six Sigma, shortly known as DFSS. Six Sigma is not only metric, not only methodology, it is also management. In any Six Sigma project, we carefully you know, uh, form the project team. The project leader should be either a green belt or a black belt. If he is not a green belt, not a black belt, he is not a project leader. Am I correct? Isn't it? Depending on the scope of the project, whether a green belt should lead the project or a black belt should lead the project, it guides. All the team members should be at least yellow belts. And then the people who are uh, supporting the project, they should be champions or sponsor. They should be project champions and sponsors. Now tell me, for the success of the project, do you think the role of the top management is important? Come on. For the success of any project, do you think the role of top management is important or not? Yes, that they give the priority to the project. Definitely that important. Or not. Yeah. Definitely okay. important. Involve them in your project. If you are not involving them, you are planning to fail. Right? Failing to involve the top management is, you know, failing to, sorry, planning to uh, fail in the project. You must involve the top management. Champions are required. Sponsors are required. Make sure the champion and sponsor sit in all the meetings. Make sure a master black belt, if exists in your company, helps you in the project selection, prioritization, developing the right KPIs and all those things, right? And, uh, and, and that means Six Sigma is a way of you know, managing people. The company practicing Six Sigma, people will be appreciated based on their ability to contribute to the organization's growth. Just because you are an aged person, you know, you will not be promoted. Just because you have you know, a, a PG degree, you will not be promoted. You will be promoted purely based on your ability to contribute to the organization's growth. You will be promoted based on your ability to produce results from the project. So Six Sigma is not only a metric, not only a methodology, it is a way of management. An high performance team is required to, you know, to make your company acquire the market share. If, if such people are absent, your organization cannot be effective. So effective people are required to make the organization effective. So Six Sigma is also a way of people management. And whatever we discussed so far can be implemented anywhere. Most of the time, many of our participants, they ask, sir, you are teaching Six Sigma so many things. Can I use it? I am from aircraft industry. I am, you know, in airline baggaging process, I take care. And somebody says, I, I am responsible for 100 diagnostic centers in my country. Can I use? All of you can use. That is the answer. We always give the same answer because everything you learn is a philosophy. You can use it for your uh, professional go growth, for your personal growth, or you, know, you can uh, use it to improve your company. It's a philosophy. So Six Sigma guarantees this kind of result. Failure will be limited to 3.4 dpmo. It works at the process level. You need to understand. Six Sigma is not a certification like ISO. ISO gives the certificate, still the quality is you know, no guarantee. But Six Sigma, moment you say the process operates at a Six Sigma capability, you are sure that the outputs you know, will have this quality. The failures will be limited to 3.4 dpmo. Six Sigma is not an organization level certification. Six Sigma is not a product level certification. 
Six Sigma is a process level approach. We give assurance only to the particular characteristics of a product, not to the whole product. You need to understand. If it is a dimension for which you are measuring the Sigma level, then dimensions are great. That's all. Still product can fail, isn't it? Customer wants dimension, customer wants strength, customer wants the aesthetics. These requirements are many. For every requirement, every characteristic, sigma level have to be great, then only your product can be great. If your products are great, then your organization can be great. Hope this particular slide is understood by all of you. Am I right? Am I boring all of you? I'm not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Clear, clear. Oh, if you if you understand all these things, you will understand Six Sigma assures a profit growth. Six Sigma assures bottom line growth, which is sustainable. Sustainable means it is not just a magic result. It appears today and vanishes tomorrow. No, it will, you will be able to sustain the benefit. Benefits are sustainable. Benefits are predictable. You practice Six Sigma for three years. What is going to happen in the fourth year, you can predict. It guarantees an inclusive growth to all the stakeholders. Your customers will be happy. Your employees will be happy. Management will be happy. Everybody will grow in the ladder. Six Sigma, desirable result. Whatever target you fix for the next three years, company will achieve it in real time. Any goal, any target you fix over a long term, they are called long-term goals. They are otherwise called as strategic goals. Strategic goals are set by the top management, which are generally long-term, and such long-term desires can be fulfilled through Six Sigma initiative, Six Sigma projects. It has five, five phases. It has the methodology called the DMAC, five phases. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. What you need to do in each and every phase specifically, define means you must express the problem in numbers. The problem is considered the Y variable in Six Sigma project. You all might know the famous equation, Y equal to F of X. Y equal to F of X. Y is nothing but the characteristics you want to improve. The characteristics is not good, and that is why customer satisfaction is going down. That is why defect percentage is going up. That is why profit is going down. So express the problem in a number format. This, this is why you are going to learn a tool called the CTQ tree. When you can, if you can express your problem in terms of numbers, you have defined the problem. So that is your goal in defined phase. Once you express the problem in number, for example, my health is down. My health is not great. When my health is not great, and when I go, go and tell the doctor, sir, I'm not feeling well. Do you think the doctor will be able to take action? He can't take any action. He said, no, I'm not well. But why, why am I not well? I must tell him, sir, no, I, I have, uh, let us say, my weight is more. Maybe I could I could give, you know, many, many fancy uh, opinions. Like I'm not able to walk and all those things. Finally, doctor will understand I am obese. Since I am obese, I am not able to walk properly. Since I am obese, I am getting diabetes and so many complications. So, the moment I say obese, now I am concerned about the weight, isn't it? My body weight. So, body weight is the problem now. The body weight should be in ideal condition, ideal weight. If you bring the body weight to ideal weight, you come out of all the illness. The problem is properly defined. There is no point to simply you know, beating around the bush. Sometimes we should come to the point. That is called defined. A well defined problem is often. You, you are not able to define the problem in terms of number. It simply means you don't even know what is the problem. If you don't even know what is the problem, why do you want to measure it? If you don't even know what is the problem, why do you want to analyze it? If you don't even understand what is the problem, why do you want to offer a solution? Questions are logical, isn't it? So you can't skip any of the phase. Define the problem to the extent that you can express the problem in numbers so that it becomes measurable. If it is measurable, move on to the measure phase. Doctor will advise you to do some diagnosis, blood, blood study, and many studies doctor will do only after thoroughly understanding the problem. Right? And that is the data collection. 
is collecting the data same way you also collect the data when you are collecting the data it is very important you collect the data without errors am i right can you go to a worst diagnostic center and you know where facilities are not up to the mark can you go and take up the diagnosis there we don't go there isn't yeah. it we go for properly you know nabl accredited lab why our reading should be reliable because reading helps the doctor to understand the problem if readings are not reliable doctor will wrongly understand the problem and can give you wrong treatment and finally you know you will suffer so doing the measure phase it is very important you measure without error why should you measure without error then only you understand the intensity of the problem then only you understand the correct intensity of the problem the correct intensity of the problem is technically called as baseline performance what is the actual level of performance in terms of sigma level in terms of cpcpk in terms of pbbpk in terms of dpmo in terms of yield whatever it is it's all one and same they are all connected you will gain the clarity right so baseline performance is understood now the gap in performance understood and what is the reason for the gap in performance which is pulling down my y which is pulling down my y maybe some x which x is you no know, pulling the y to a major extent that is called critical x critical x can be one or many depending on the complexity of the problem critical x can be one or many but what is important is the factor which is you know majorly responsible for pulling down of your y or majorly responsible for the problem is called critical factor otherwise called the root cause you should be you should be able to analyze and identify the root cause as well as validate the root cause see identification is enough see if uh, imagine you have seen uh, a crime happened in a highway you have seen a crime happened in a highway you have found the criminal also you are producing him in the court do you think the judge will hang him on the next day will ask for the evidence because facts are required facts and reports are required for punishment same way for making changes in any business process facts and reports are required so for creating the facts and reports you need statistical validation statistical validation procedure is called hypothesis testing we will be teaching you hypothesis testing in the analyze phase through which you can convince the judge and make the judge write the judgment in your favor right and so objective of analyze phase is identification and validation of root cause now you defined the problem measured the problem analyzed the problem for the root cause now you are eligible to discuss about the solution am i correct you are now eligible to discuss about the solution that is called improve what is improve now talk about the solution why are you talking about the solution because you have done the three but if you don't do any of the three properly if you still talk about the solution your solution will not have any meaning in real time right so in improve phase you will be providing treatment to the patient as a doctor you are providing treatment to the patient treatment is nothing but fixing the x fixing the x fixing the root cause when you go to doctor doctor gives you paracetamol 500 mg that's a treatment and similarly in your company the boiler is not you know performing or not giving the yield properly so you change the temperature to 500 degrees celsius changing the temperature to 500 degrees celsius is the solution so so setting the root cause setting the critical factor is called the treatment medical term same term we use in statistics also identify the x optimize the x identification validation is analysis actually optimizing the x is improve phase now problem is solved your y has you know come to the decide level we don't want the y to drop again once the patient is given a treatment he is about to discharge have you seen a doctor giving a lot of you know advice to the patient he gives lot of control measures how to eat how to walk how to speak how to sleep everything doctor tells do you think the patient and the caretaker do not know but still doctor will tell everything same way you have done the improvement 
you should not simply think that you no know, people in the company knows everything like how you work they will also work you are going to be completely wrong you have to pass on all the knowledge you have gained in while defining the problem while measuring the problem while analyzing for the root cause while developing the solution you might have gone through several struggles and challenges am i correct you need to pass on all the knowledge in the form of a control plan why then only the result produced will be sustained otherwise you know you might reduce the defect rate from 10% to 2% again within 3 months it will be again 10% do you think that is a six sigma project no problem once solved should be solved forever and that is why we have control phase an important tool to be mastered to work effectively in the control phase is control chart control chart is one of the seven basic quality control tool you should know what this you know how to construct the control chart how to read a control chart and then you know how to work effectively so that any point you plot in a control chart always fall inside the control limit and how to keep the control limits closer to target for that your knowledge in normal distribution is very important we are going to teach you sometimes bore you with some statistical modules because that is essential we know but if you hesitate a lot to learn some statistical modules the normal distribution and all those things you cannot see yourself as a black belt control chart has got two lines control limit am i right control limit you can understand only if you understand normal distribution so all that we are going to teach so to that your y variable your y variable always lies at the decide level by controlling your x variable within the control limit see i started the project talking about the y variable but i am closing the project talking about the x variable why x has caused the y x only caused the problem so i control the x i no more i i i need to control the y I, as long as i control the x effectively my y will be always at the decide level this approach is called six sigma approach this methodology is called six sigma methodology we call it dmac in short which stands for define measure analyze improve and control we are going to train you on each and every phase the first week is devoted to define the second week is devoted to measure and part of analyze and the third week is devoted to analyze improve and control this is the plan right and we have carefully divided each phase into some simple steps so that all of you